that feeling you get when you return to your car to realize it's been run into. Or you scrape that curb, or you realize that there's been damage done to your car and there's no one around. You're on a budget and you want to fix it. This is how to do that. The goal for this video is to get our bonnet and our front bumper repainted. To do that, we're gonna remove some of the trim. We're also going to take off the plastic dip that we put on our little front bar. Um, and we've got Michael here showing us how to do that so that we can repaint it. So explain thing. for the people at home, what we're trying to do is just scratch off that edge so we can get the seam, rip the whole thing off. And the hit. This feels so very wrong, but I'm going to start sanding away at this little bird poo uh, section that's been eroded by the acid in the in the droppings in the duty of the rodent, the flying rodent. Look at that! It's coming away. Jack up your car. Grab a couple of screwdrivers, a 10mm socket. Get underneath there and start undoing some of the parts that are connecting to the front bar of your car. So, to get off our number plate mounting pad, which we need to do to be able to access all back in here, we need to play it, take off our front grille. To take off the front grille, we've actually got to take off the entire front bar. To take off the entire front bar, I thought that would be a bit of a job. So I started working on my lights, just to discover, bring it right in, that once you've undone your clips around here and here, all you have to do is give it a pull. The entire thing comes off. That's crazy just how easy that was. We actually may paint that off the car now. I was going to leave it on, um, but if that's that easy to get off, we may not paint that on the car. Um, if that's the case, we may pull the bonnet off as well and do both these bits off the car and leave the side for another day. So we've just found some interesting archaeological discoveries in the radiator, we found this. Mmm! It's um, Kraft Premium 98% fat free. That's, but that's why you've um, been getting under 15s. That's it? Yeah. That. Protein powered. That's, that's, the, that's the problem right there. I don't even know what that is. I don't know if it's a problem, I think it's I think it's helping your engine. That's that's an energy. Integral, that's an integral yeah. part of it. You're right. Maybe we'll, we'll just yeah. Om, nom, 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 nom. We'll just cut that back where we found it. Cause every bit helps. Balanced we'll diet. <laughs> so we worked out that the reason you can't get this off is there's just bolts at the back. Um, that was my fault for trying to screw it from the front. Wrong way to do it. Of course, because you'd have the bolts at the front, not the back. Um, this grill just has tabs, only them, the entire grill comes out super easy. If you're doing this job, seriously, take the front bumper off. Like five screws. And a few on that. Handful of screws. We're going to paint this off the car. That's going to be so much easier. Just to take this stuff off, um, attach all our, our hoses uh, for our water jets, our lights, um, strip this back, um, paint it. Put it back on. So we're just pulling off the um, 
these little water jets here from the bumper so we can um, sand around them. Um, and you see here that they're, they're held on by a small white clip down here. Um, now these just, I've, I've pulled one off here, but there's just, I don't know if you can pick it up on the, on the camera, but there's a little tab that holds it in there and there. So basically you just need to separate those two out um, and, and then slide it out. So what we'll do is we'll just get a little special gizmo here and lift and separate. And with the miracles of editing, this will happen immediately. There we go. Let's pull that out there. You'll notice on the end of the hose here, there's a red, little red dot, and that matches up with a little red dot here on the tab. So when you pull them off, um, yeah, just know what colours you've got. The other thing to notice is just the way that the um, the V goes. So you've got, if you're counting that as a letter Y, the um, stem of the letter Y goes to the outmost uh, jet. And that's it. Got to make sure you mark where stuff comes from. Using a trim removal tool, take off the tabs that hold the bottom clip of your front guard. You can only do this once that actual front lip is off the car. There it goes, quite, quite simple. Now we're removing all of the jets for our washer and the car is almost ready to be marked. So we're using a texter marking anything that we really want to get rid of. Any chips or stone marks or anything like that. There's a lot of them. And now it's time to sand. Sanding is simple but slow. Use a crisscross motion with your sandpaper until you get down to the bottom of the chip or the mark. Tell Timmy you're reducing the drag coefficient. I'm reducing the drag <laughs> <laughs> Up until this point, we've probably spent two hours getting the, the bar off the car and sanded. Rylan also decided to show us some dance moves, so check this video out to see more of that. Four bolts later and the bonnet is removed. You will need someone to help you with this. Don't attempt this by yourself. Then we decided to take a break, spend some time with our family. Later that night, however, we decided to tackle the bonnet. So we started the sanding process. When it comes to sanding, I tend to use finer sandpaper for longer. I just enjoy that process rather than going a larger, thicker, coarser sandpaper and having large scratches to have to, to buff out. I will use an orbital sander from time to time, but generally I try and just use hand sandpaper and a special bar just to, to get it down so I can actually have more of a feel of what I'm doing as I'm sanding. That is, um, in Michael's words, Swiss cheese. That thing. Teenager's face and it's just bits going everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, every one of those was a stone chip. And as soon as you get into it, it just turns into a little rust spot, and the rust spot sits under the paint, and you've got to get it out and full on. Look at that. That's um that's eight year old car. That's what it looks like. So we're now gonna flip this over, tape it up, tape the bottom half so when we spray it we don't get stuff everywhere, leave it overnight and have a look in the morning to see if there's anything we missed and if it's looking good we'll um, put down the base cap. So now we are setting up our spray booth in the shed. So we're going to hook up some tarps so that we don't get dust falling onto our paint job. This takes a little while and we've tried a few different configurations over the years but this is what we're going with for today. 
drilling down our paint stuff, checking our tools, making sure everything's clean, ready to go. We've added a filter to our regulator. We've just turned what would you know, be a normal gun into um, like a juggernaut of handles, but that's all right, we need that. That's gonna take any water out of the air that we're spraying in the gun. We've got our new regulator, which means we can open the air into the gun right up and regulate that using the pressure so we know exactly what is coming out of the gun. I've had issues in the past with not either having too much pressure or not enough. This will stop that from taking place. And now, because the last time we used it was a clear coat, we're now going to change our fittings to um, suit our primer and our primer filler, which is just basically a larger, a larger um, end of the tip. So we're going from 1.4 to the 1.8 which is what we're going to use for that and I'll show you how to do it. We're going to take off the end of the 14, we're going to undo this with a 13mm spanner to reduce the pressure then you unscrew the back of your little piston shaft all the way out, there'll be a spring on there so make sure that doesn't shoot off anyway just like that. Make sure you've got a clean surface of course Give that a really strong tug then, that'll come straight out. It's a little bit, I did clean that uh, fairly well. There's a little bit of gunk on there, but we'll clean before we use that again. Making sure that I'm putting all of our old stuff together. We put the new shaft in. Good. I'll take this the rest of the way out. The set that we're going to use for our colour and our colour and clear. Screwing the 1.8, the thicker diameter nozzle. Uh, on the, the nozzle itself, it should be written 1.8 on there. And it'll also have it on the front. But if you keep them together, um, it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about any of that. Now, if I put it quick, you do that first before you do it at the other end. And then push that forward, spring goes in, put on your 1.8 head. Depending on which way these face, um, depends which way your paint will come out. Um, you know, up and down or, or vertical. So we're going to go vertical. That's what I'm used to doing. Ready to go. We've first used water and rags and now we're using wax and grease remover to remove anything that's on the paint. Check your own paint, but we're using four parts primer to one hardener and using about 10% thinners just to get that to come out smoother. Now we are dialing in our gun, getting it to, to run smoother. That wasn't coming out right. So rather than wasting you know, that, we're gonna see if we can work out what's going on with the gun, why that's not spraying, and um, then, we'll then we'll do it again with the mix we've made. You know, the mix is right, we'll see. Sort out what the problem is. Um, so he pulled out all the existing filler that was in there, uh, just put in a um, just a sort of test batch of stuff to just try and work out, fill it with the gun and see what's happening with it. Uh, once we get that sorted, uh, fill it back in and we're all good to go. Going for a really light mist. How yep. far away are you keeping the gun there, Tim? Trying to keep it about a foot away. First coat's almost done. This is on. Make sure. So, in between paint, if you've got your double glove on, grab it. Um, Sit it on something under your glove, carefully, in a way that it actually sits over the top of it. It's not that perfected. 
can't do that. Means you've, you've sealed in. Ta da! I've sealed in my paint. <coughs> that mask on. But I've sealed that in there, um, and that should be good to go for a little bit. Um, yeah, done. So now we're going to leave that for about 10 or 15 minutes, let that dry, and then we'll come back and we'll do it again. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Build up the filler, build up the primer, and um, get out of this room because it stinks. snag, the snag being that our little piece that sits in here does not want to be primed. For whatever reason, um, the primer is not sticking it. We've tried the, the same primer as the bumper, and what it did is where it had been sanded back to zero, where it had been sanded back to um, the plastic, it seemed to react around the edges, so either it's reacting with the previous primer or it's reacting to something else we've put it on. Um, we then tried a can of um, primer, a different primer, it was made for plastic. That didn't work, I've just tried um, a bit of Scotch, a bit of, bit of metal primer the exact same thing's happening. You can see the edges of where we've hit the plastic. Um, that's where the, the bat left his message, and these are the other bits. You can see that, that is actually reacted fairly badly. We're gonna have to take that back to zero, everything, um, all the way back to one, and we're gonna have to start that one from scratch, but we can't have any paint left on it, so that will be a pain. So last night everything was ready to go. Tacked off the bonnet and the bar. They were looking great. They were looking really good. They were ready for ready for paint. The gun was dialed in just perfectly. Just a bit of a fluke, but it was just had the perfect spray pad, just the way I like it. Um, I would have done a ton of painting, but with that had when I used it with that setup, it's um, it's been great in the past. So so that was good. Mixed the paint for well over 20 minutes, um, just to realise that it was not the right colour. It didn't look the right colour while I was mixing. It didn't look the right colour when I I made a test batch. Um, didn't look right the colour when I sprayed it. And so rather than risk it drying the wrong colour, because sometimes paint can dry um, a different colour, I, I pulled the pin last night and decided not to paint. Um, so now it's first thing in the morning. We're on our way back to the paint shop. They open at 8 o'clock, so we'll be there when their doors open. And We'll sort out what's going on with that paint. It looks as if 
the the paint mix isn't quite right. I'm going home to grab the, the petrol filler cap as a reference. From there, they'll um they're gonna see if all the colours match up. But they were saying that um it doesn't actually look like it's me. Uh, it's not my mixing abilities, but that's a good thing. I'm happy about that. There it is. Back from the paint shop, we are good to go. So that was um, a bit of a morning, really. We, um, we spent some time traveling around. We've now got our paint be awesome mixed up ready to go um, and so we are gonna prep this again um, which is what we did yesterday prep it make sure everything's clean exactly like what we did yesterday and then um, I'm gonna get some paint on this thing See that, but that is looking. Awesome. This is um the day after. This is the morning of the day after. And that looks awesome. You can see there's a couple of little blemishes um, in there. Which the primer didn't fill. It's re it was really hard to tell with this bumper because it's a clear primer. Um, oh yeah, there's a bit of bit of stuff here that we didn't sand out right either but that's okay because that's exactly where the number plate sits but everything else looks brilliant that is fantastic <laughs> And now it's time to put on the clear coat. We are so close. We have one more to go. Just one more and then it's done. smoothen out and that will be it. Alrighty so it's um six in the morning. Um, can't really see much out there anyway. This is the the day after our final paint. We'll need a a buff a little bit orange peel, you're not, not that bad. This is looking awesome. So the front bar is looking really good, really good. So what's next is, um, yeah, that front bar looks amazing. Truth is 
is not mocked up. I've never done this yet. So I think this is the first time I've attempted to put this back on the car since it came off. Stay please. I'm hoping and praying that it will look about like that. Yes! sleep really well. That could probably use a bit of a buff, but hey, whatever. That is exactly what I wanted. Oh wow, that's good. That's pretty damn close. So if you get close enough, you'll see that. Let me get that just looking nice. Can you pick the difference in the paint colour? No. Look at that, even the spec. I don't know if you can get any contrast, any idea of the fleck that's in that. But that is perfect. Absolutely. Well, for me, I'm happy. Yeah, you saw I did the same paint for both. That just hasn't worked out. For whatever reason, I, I believe that must be my technique. The way that I painted that hasn't worked. Um, my version of spraying a gun on um, that angle versus here where I could actually spray directly onto the surface because I was spraying kind of on the angle. I don't think the paint's come out right. We're going to give that a really quick version of a buff. I can already tell, like, yeah, it's, it's, I can hear it squeaky clean, um, but just from that bit, that font's oh, alright. I know I'm out of um, buffing, he's going to get that bonnet right, that bonnet still needs, it needs redoing. Looking good, and we are going all out. We haven't got that little suit on. That's when that serious stuff this time. Before we even started today, I did check the paint. It looked like about a quarter of a can. Um, just possibly a little bit optimistic with that. And it wasn't quite a quarter of a can a paint of a one litre thing of paint I thought it would be enough just to go over the top of the bonnet but it's not hey that's gonna do it that's um pretty close to being done we're gonna do one more coat on that and that is looking pretty good happy with it the colour's looking good, the dip's looking good, the flex's looking good, that dries smooth, and we'll be happy as it's looking good.
and now to see if we can solve the mystery of the bubbling paint and fix our little grill badge. I also thought while we were finishing it up that the bonnet had a little bit of orange peel which is sort of that roughness and so we used some wet uh, sandpaper and cut that back and then buffed out any scratches that were left from that. Then we return back to our center grill where the badge sits and we really, really lightly misted on a coat of paint and we did that over and over and over again to build up a layer to the point where we could get it flat, we could sand it and paint it and sand it using a lot of primer filler. That was quite bulky and, uh, and we just used that bit clear in the, the touch-up gun um, just because that's what we had to use. So we finally got that centerpiece looking okay. We went back and gave it one more around just there's a few more swirls in there and then we'll put the car back together. So um that's spray painting for you. That's the bonnet and the front bar done, front bumper. That job, while you've watched it over half an hour, has actually taken over six weeks on and off, especially because we did the bonnet three times. We used um, 2K, uh, two pack primer for a start, uh, two pack paint, which is quite dangerous. So make sure you have good ventilation, you've got the filters and stuff in your shed. We just use homemade stuff. Uh, make sure you've got a really good mask. If you are going to use that, if possible, hire a booth, do it properly. Then we used acrylic um, to finish it and it worked just as well. Acrylic's so much better if you're doing it at home. That was a really long job, it's labor intensive. You're without a car park for a long time um, because you've got to sand it, but then you've got to allow flash time between paints. So while you could get it done in a day with good weather, it takes a long time. So we're very happy with the end product. And while you've only seen two paints go onto the, the bonnet and onto the car, and actually, like I said, I did three. So you can check out some of these photos to see the third coat. I didn't film it because the video was getting too long and to be honest, I couldn't be bothered filming another one because it took so long. There you go. But I hope you enjoy. Long story short, you can do it yourself, but it takes a lot of time. Even at the end, three different coats, each time with fresh paint, fresh batch paint, try to get the color right, it still doesn't quite match perfectly. So I guess the benefit of getting um, somebody to do it properly is they can get the colour closer rather than, even though I took panels in, they still couldn't match the colour perfectly. So to go to a professional may be worth it if you've got a tricky colour like Mazda Silver paint. But that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoy it. Watch some of the blooper reels. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Also, sadly, but also excitingly, this is the last of Tim's auto vids. I know. Sad. What's exciting is the next video that you see will actually be Tim's Garage. Brand new brand of video in conjunction with some film guys. We're actually getting bigger and better and very, very excited about that. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Also check out Fernando's photos of what the finished product looks like. Dude, these are great photos. Thank you so much for taking these shots at a, an MPS 6 meet. They are fantastic. Enjoy that, and we'll see you next time on Tim's Garage. See you later.
Tootie 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 Tootie